Ladies and gents, welcome to a great evening. If you're looking for a world of gumshoes, wise guys, gorgeous dames, and dirty rats, kick back and enjoy. Welcome to Full Moon Matinee. Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, the detective, conducting investigations into the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Tonight's picture is 1945's The Lady Confesses, starring Hugh Beaumont and Mary Beth Hughes. Mary Beth played in a number of films throughout the 40s and 50s, and is most remembered for her role in The Oxbow Incident, which was nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards in 1943. During the same time period, Hugh played in, in a number of crime movies. Uh, in, in 46 and 47, played in a series of about four or five films, uh, something of a franchise character that was named Private Eye Michael Shane. Later on, he evolved into television and is remembered by us today for his role as Ward Cleaver on the TV series Leave It to Beaver. So, from 1945, the lady confesses. Let's roll the picture. Are you Vicki McGuire? Why, yes. Won't you come in? I'm Larry Craig's wife. But I thought you were dead. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm very much alive. I understand you're planning to marry my husband. Yes, I was planning to. You were gone almost seven years and Larry didn't know where you were. And according to law... Forget the technicalities. It's not that I want him for myself. I most certainly don't. But he'll never marry you nor anyone else. I'll see to that. I wouldn't feel too badly about it, Miss McGuire. I'm doing you a favor. Good night. Is Larry Craig there? Club 7-Eleven. Thank you.
Information, will you please give me the number of Club 7-Eleven on Hawthorne Boulevard? It's all your fault. If I'm not sleeping, I live on dreams instead of eating. I'm just a wreck and it's all your fault. Oh, it's all your fault. If I'm not playing, having fun, and if I'm staying all by myself, well, it's all your fault. When you said that we were through, I tried to find somebody new, but I Club found out it wouldn't Who? Larry Craig? I haven't seen him all evening. Okay. Oh, it's all your fault. When I'm not grandma, my grandkids will call you grandpa. Well, I'll be telling you, it's all your fault. Oh, it's all your fault. If I'm not sleeping, I live on dreams instead of eating. I'm just a wreck and it's all your fault. Hello, Stevie. Why, hello, Mr. Craig. I just had a phone call for you. Yeah, who is it? But she wouldn't say and she wouldn't tell her to give me a message. Sure, huh? Yeah. Well, give me a double scotch. Pardon me, darling. Give me a show. If I was you, I'd sort of sit out the next drink. Listen, Stevie. No lectures, just scotch, huh? Sure, why not? Thank you. Because I'd rather be alone than with somebody. Where's my double scotch? Sure, it is right in front of you. No. Come on, come on. I got to have a chaser, Stevie. Oh, come on. Stop quibbling. Stop quibbling. Okay. You're the doctor. Nobody loves a quibbler, Stevie. Oh, You'd like to get back from his trip yet? Yeah, he got back the other day. He's, in, huh? He's a great fellow. He's been a friend of mine for years and years. Where is he? Well, he was around here a few minutes ago, but I guess he's out in his office now. Yeah, well, I better go check up on him. I don't want Lucky to get lost. Oh, it's all your fault if I'm not playing, having fun. And if I'm staying all by myself, well, it's all your fault. When you said that we were through, I tried to find somebody new. But I found out it wouldn't do, cause I'd rather be alone than with somebody new. Oh, it's all your fault. When I'm not grandma, my grandkids will call you grandpa. Well, I'll just tell them it's all your fault. Hello, Lucky. I didn't hear you knock. That's funny. I didn't. But this is a private office, you know. Okay. I won't let anybody in. I've never seen you like this before. That's funny. You look different, too. Now look, Larry, don't you think you're going overboard? Not that I object to buying a drink, but well, that stuff isn't exactly a tonic, you know. Well, a guy doesn't live forever. What are you celebrating? Long life or an early death? Don't you worry about me, Lucky. I can handle my liquor. Yeah, looks like it. Just as good as you can handle your women. I don't mix my women with scotch. Hmm, that's funny. It's got five hands. It's 1045. Oh, it's 1045. Okay, thank you, Lucky. Oh, Lucky. Now I know what I came in for. Did you have a good trip? Great trip, great. I'll take it easy, Larry. Okay, goodbye. Uh, you were great tonight. The best little singer this town's ever had. You look like you're doing pretty good yourself. Sure, I'm gonna go see my girl. She's wonderful. We're gonna get married. Larry, you can't go out like that. Why don't you go lie down in my dressing room for a while? Oh, no, I don't want to lie down. I gotta go see Vicky. You're in no condition to see anyone. Come on, Larry. No. All right, all right. Uh, but just for you. Yes. If it was for anybody uh, else, I wouldn't do it for a minute. I wouldn't. I, I'm going to do it. But it's just for you, you understand? I know it. I know it. Now, you lie down, Larry. Yeah. 
Be a good boy and close your pretty eyes. You don't want that wonderful girl to see you like this, now, do you? No, oh, no, she no. might think I drink. Sure. Yeah. Oh, you're a real pal. All right. Uh, left a couple of hours ago. Somebody want Larry Craig? Yeah. Well, he's asleep in my dressing room. I'll get him for you. Just a minute. He'll be right here. Larry. Larry, wake up. Hmm? What? What are you doing here? You're wanted on the telephone, Larry. Come on now, pull yourself oh. together. Yeah, sure. Ooh, thanks for letting me park. From now on, I'm going to stick to banana splits. Where's the phone? At the bar. Oh, yeah. Uh, what time is it? Almost one o'clock. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Lucky. Thank you, darling. Oh, Larry, I've been trying to reach you all evening. I must see you. All right, I'll pick you up in 15 minutes, okay? All right, goodbye, dear. Let's play, All right, Larry. I knew she was in town, Vicky. She's been back a couple of weeks. Oh, but Larry, you should have told me. Well, I trust have upset you. Well, I had to find out about it sometime. Look, the day Norma disappeared, we had an appointment with her lawyer. I'm sure she hasn't uh, had a change of heart as far as I'm concerned. I wish I could feel about it as you do. But your wife made it quite clear that she had no idea of ever giving you up. Ah, Norma's just impulsive, that's all. Her vanity's probably hurt to think I'd want to marry another woman. Where are we going? To Norma's. Straighten this thing out. Oh, well, isn't it rather late? It's all right. Norma keeps rather late hours. Larry, would it be all right if I waited here for you? Sure, whatever you want, dear. I won't be long. I'm Larry Craig. Glad to meet you, Mr. Craig. My name is Harmon. How do you do? I'd like to see my wife. Come in. What's going on here? Well, I told you no one was to come in here. This is Mr. Craig. He wants to see his wife. Mrs. Craig is dead. I'll have to ask you to identify the body. Craig was murdered. What are you doing here? Oh, why, I'm waiting for Mr. Craig. Well, I think you'd better wait inside. What's wrong? Mrs. Craig has been murdered. But I just talked to her a couple of hours ago. She, she died kind of sudden. Come on.
car outside. She was waiting for him. Oh, Larry, this is terrible. What's your name, miss? Vicki McGuire. Friend of Mrs. Craig's? Well, I only met her once, and that was just for a few moments. She's a friend of mine. Oh, I see. Your wife didn't object to your having uh, friends? My wife disappeared almost seven years ago. Prior to that time, we were separated for more than a year. Miss McGuire and I are planning to be married when Norma suddenly turned up about two weeks ago. That sort of upset your marriage plans? She says she spoke to Mrs. Craig a couple of hours ago. Kill it. What did you two talk about? Well... It's all right. Go ahead. We have nothing to hide. Well, she told me she'd never give up, Mr. Craig, and for me to forget about marrying him. What took you guys so long? Higgins got hooked in the gin run again. Where's the body? In there. Come on, I can't wait all night. Hi, Captain. Hi, Captain, uh, boys. Why don't people get murdered at a respectable hour? Maybe we could pass a law or something. Captain, isn't there someplace else where we could talk? By all means. I know this isn't very pleasant. Come on. Be sure and get a picture of the mark on her neck. Your wife was strangled by a thin wire, Mr. Craig. All right, hold it still. Don't let this question bother you. Where were you two all evening? I went to the 7-Eleven Club about 10.30. I was there until almost one. See anyone you knew? Yes, yeah, several people. I'd like to talk to them. I have no objections. How about you, Miss McGuire? She was at home all evening. I talked to her on the telephone. I think Miss McGuire can answer for herself. Well, I was gone for about a half an hour. I went to a restaurant nearby. What time was that? Oh, I should say about 11.30. Look, surely you don't suspect either of us? Just routine. Harmon. Check Miss McGuire's alibi. She said she went to a restaurant. She'll tell you where. It's okay. Take her home. Yes, Captain. Come on, Miss. But you went home, Mr. Craig. I was on my way, Gladys, but this gentleman was curious about where I spent the evening. You were here, of course. Do you remember what time Mr. Craig came in? Not exactly, but I think it was around quarter to eleven. Say, what is this, a quiz? My wife has been murdered, Gladys. And I'm number one on the suspect list. But you were in the club, Mr. Craig. Did you see him leave? Why, yes. He took his hat, he checked it with me. About what time was that? It must have been after 12.30. I remember because my boyfriend had just called me to tell me he couldn't pick me up. Thanks, Gladys. Who else saw you? I had a couple of drinks at the bar. Sorry, Larry, but we're closed. Steve, uh, you remember my being here earlier this evening, don't you? Sure, but I didn't think you'd remember. You were pretty well lit up. How long did Mr. Craig stay? Oh, a cop, huh? Yeah. It's all right. Go on. Uh, just routine. Just long enough to have a couple of drinks. I'd say about 10 or 15 minutes. Who else saw you? From here, I went into Lucky Brandon's office. I was there for a few minutes. Then on the way out, I bumped into Lucille Compton. She's the singer here at the club. Uh, she made me take a nap. I wonder if she's still here. Miss Compton's still here? I didn't see her go, though. She might still be in the dressing room. Thanks, Dean. Well, are you satisfied I was here? Yes, you have a perfect alibi, Mr. Craig. Almost too perfect. Yes? Who is it? It's Larry Craig. I have a friend with me. May we come in? Sure. Come on. Uh, Lucille, this is Captain Brown. This is Miss Compton. Good evening, Miss Compton. How do you do? Lucille, you remember my being here earlier If you don't evening? mind, I'll ask the questions. What time did you first see Mr. Craig? It was after my third number. That was about, uh, 10.55. He says he went to sleep here in your dressing room. Is that right? Why, yes. Say, what's this all about? What's happened? My wife has been murdered, Lucille. Oh, no, Larry. I thought you hadn't heard from her in years. Well, she came back about two weeks ago. The captain here is checking up on me. Oh, Larry couldn't have had anything to do with it. Why, he was asleep on that couch until almost one o'clock. 
Were you with him all that time? Of course not. I had to work. But I stopped in as often as I could to see if he was all right. Believe me, Captain, Larry was in no condition to get off that couch. Come in. Oh, didn't know you were coming to a sale. Just wanted to give you a check. I'm glad you came in, Lucky. Anything wrong, Captain? The uh, Captain just wants to know what time you saw me early this evening. Who are you talking about? I didn't see you this evening. Well, Lucky, you must be kidding. I, I was in your office. I helped myself to a drink. You better lay off that liquor. You're beginning to imagine things. Look, look, you were at the safe when I came in. Surely you must remember. Look, you better see a psychiatrist. You weren't in my office. Not while I was there, anyway. This is serious, Lucky. Larry's wife has been murdered. Why, he was right here in this room for a couple of hours anyway. So he's got his alibi. You saw him. I didn't. You're not telling the truth, Lucky, and you know it. Come to think of it, I wonder if you might not have a reason for lying. When I left here, you were sneaking in the back door. I called to you and you pretended you didn't hear me. Now I know you were drunk. I don't believe there are any further questions. Thanks, Lucky. Run along now, Mr. Craig. If I need you, I'm sure I can find you. All right, thanks, Captain. Thanks, Mr. Captain, you don't think he possibly could have killed his wife, do you? If he was here, he couldn't have. Good night, Miss Compton. Come in, Captain. I didn't see him. <laughs> I believe you're lucky. Just want to check a few things. Sure. You knew Norma Craig, didn't you? Yeah, been friends for a long time. Wasn't she interested in the 7-Eleven Club? She loaned me $10,000 when I first opened the club. I don't see what that has to do with the murder. You didn't seem surprised when you heard she was dead. I've got a poker face. I wonder why Craig insists he saw you sneak in the rear door of the club. He didn't see me sneak in the rear door or any other door. And for a very good reason. I never left the club all evening. You're sure you didn't drop over to see Mrs. Craig just to say hello after her long absence? Look, Captain, you're wasting your time with me. Why don't you try somebody else? Well, I guess I'll be running along, Lucky. Yeah. Drop it, Eddie. Thanks. Hello? Oh, Vicky, darling. I was beginning to worry about you. You were so long answering the phone. I just got in. The detectives wanted to talk to that girl in the restaurant who waited on me. We had to go to her boarding house. Yeah, well, I had quite a session, too. Everyone at the club remembered seeing me, but lucky Brandon. But don't worry, dear, it's going to be all right. I, I can't tell you how sorry I am to have dragged you into all this. Well, it wasn't your fault, Larry. How were you to know? All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Sorry if I startled you, Miss McGuire. How did you get in here? You left your door unlocked. You must have a clear conscience. What do you want, Captain? I just got through talking to Mr. Harmon. He said the waitress didn't remember what time you were in. But she did remember that I was there. Why were you so nervous when you were in the restaurant? Oh, I don't know. Mrs. Craig coming back from the murder and all those questions. You came right back here from the restaurant? Yes. See anyone you knew? No, I didn't. No one call on you? You didn't drop in any other apartment? I spent the evening reading and trying to get in touch with Larry. Miss McGuire, tell me, when do you and Mr. Craig plan on being married? Oh, I don't know. Certainly not until all this is cleared up. If Mrs. Craig hadn't come back, you would be free to marry him? In about two months. Mr. Craig had spoken to a lawyer about it. Well, don't let these questions bother you. If I thought for a moment you had anything to do with the murder, you would be in jail right now. And that goes for Mr. Craig, too. Well, then why are you here? 
I've got to get all the information I can. Just routine. Sorry I disturbed you, Miss McGuire. Good night. Good night, Kim. Larry, I'm sure Captain Brown suspects it. Oh, that's ridiculous. He was satisfied with your explanation of where you spent the evening, wasn't he? I'm afraid not. The only person who saw me was the girl in the restaurant. She doesn't remember what time she saw me. You know, I, I can't figure him out anyway. At least three different people saw me at the 7-Eleven Club, and I still don't think he's convinced I spent the evening there. I guess he figures my motive is too good to disregard. Well, as far as the police are concerned, I wanted Norm out of the way, too. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. But in the meantime, I'm hungry. How about you? I'm done. got to snap out of it. Oh, I'm all right. No, you're not. Now, look, everything's going to work out fine. I hope so. I'm afraid this is more serious than we think. Hello? Hope I'm not intruding. Oh, no, no, not at all, Captain. Uh, sit down. Thank you. How are you, Miss McGuire? Fine, thank you. Have some lunch. Mm, just finished. Anything new on the case? Not a thing. The murder was pretty clever. He left no fingerprints and absolutely no clues. Mr. Craig, why did you and your wife separate? I don't know. Just didn't get along, I guess. Maybe it was my fault. It wasn't because she helped him start the 7-Eleven Club, was it? No. Oh, although I knew about that. You see, I never questioned my wife about what she did with her money, Captain. It was hers. She inherited it from her mother. Oh, I see. I didn't sleep very well last night. I kept thinking about something you said. You are sure you saw Brandon slip into the club? Yes, I'm quite sure. Well, was he interested in your wife? Uh, that is, uh, personally? I don't know. Although I always had the feeling Norma was quite fond of him. And you didn't leave the club, not even for a little while? No, Captain. Not even for a little while. <laughs> I'm going to have to do something pretty soon. DA's getting very impatient. Look here, Captain Brown. I've established where I was the night of the murder. You don't believe it. Miss McGuire is the last person in the world you should suspect. And yet you pop up in her apartment, I suppose, hoping that she'll say something to incriminate herself. Now, you're not following us around because you're lonesome. If you think we're guilty, why don't you arrest us? You're jumping at conclusions. Merely routine. Well, I don't like your routine. Well, I must be running along. Goodbye, Miss McGuire. Bye, Captain. I sure would like to know why Brandon wouldn't alibi for you. Good day. Clary, I wonder why he did deny that he saw you. I wish I knew. Captain Brown evidently thinks he had something to do with the murder, or he wouldn't have brought up his name. Maybe when I saw Lucky sneaking in the back of the club, he was coming back from Norma's. He wouldn't recognize me because he wanted an alibi for himself. He could bear watching. Larry, I could do it. Do what? Watch him. Well, I could get a job in the club. He doesn't know me. I thought you didn't like nightclubs. Well, what difference does that make? Maybe I could find out something that even the police couldn't. Vicki, you're not serious. Don't you realize that if Brandon is the murderer and he finds you snooping around the club, your life wouldn't be worth a plug nickel? And don't you realize the spot we're in? Well, I've got to do it. Oh, no, no. Uh, is Mr. Brandon here? He won't be here for a couple of hours. Oh. Oh, pardon me. Are you the girl who photographs the guests here? Yes. Could I see you for a moment? Sure. Come to the dark room. I have to load some plates. What's on your mind, kid? How would you like a vacation? <laughs> Who wouldn't? Look, here's $50. I want your job for a couple of days. Say, I do. You've got to help me out. There's a guy here I'm just crazy about, and he doesn't even know that I exist. All I want to do is get acquainted. Say, who is this lucky Romeo? Uh, the bartender. Steve? I don't know what there is about the guy, but he just sends me. <sighs> now I've heard everything. Will you do it? 
You want to work one of these cameras? Of course, that's easy. What do you think? I'll do it, but believe me, you're making a bad deal. Thanks. Hiya, Margie. Let me look at you, Steve. Hey, what's going on here? Maybe I'm crazy. Well, I ain't gonna argue that point with you, Margie. Steve, a gal just came in here and gave me 50 bucks to take my place, just so she could be near you. Huh? What's the matter with her? That's what I'd like to know. You're irresistible, that's all. Well, so long, Casanova. Make a nice souvenir if you visit to the Club 7-Eleven. Are you new here? Oh, no, I've been here a long time. How would you like it? Straight on a profile? Straight on if you don't mind. Now, oh, look at me and smile. How are you tonight, Mr. Brandon? Hello, Pep. How are you? Will you have a drink with us, Mr. Brandon? Thanks. I can dish it out, but I can't take it. <laughs> well, some other time, Lucky. You bet. Destroy that picture, Miss. Hmm. Yes, Mr. Brandon. Oh, I have my mouth open. Is that something new? I'll have it for you in about a half hour. man eating in your own place. I'm used to it. Join me? Oh, thank you. Been watching the papers and I see you haven't cracked that Craig case yet. Mm, I must be slipping. How did you and Norma Craig stand? Meaning what? She owned a bit of this place, didn't she? She was paid off a long time ago. You're a hard man to discourage, Captain. If you keep this up, you're going to have me believing that I'm under suspicion. Everyone is until this case is cleared up. Well, guess I'll be running along. I'll be seeing you, Lucky. I don't doubt it. Well, I got one. I hope it's all right. You'll soon find out. Anything wrong? Why, no, Mr. Brandon. Oh, Bill, uh, go and get me a couple of cigars. Uh, yes, sir. What happened to Marge? Well, she was taken ill. Uh, she asked me if I could help her out for a few days. Why didn't she tell me? Well, I'm sure I don't know. It happened so suddenly. Maybe I'd better call her up and see if there's anything I can do. Oh, no. Uh, she didn't go to her home. She's staying with a sick aunt. And she mustn't be disturbed. You learn to work one of these things. Oh, I've been around the camera a lot. I've been a photographic model for years. I'd like to see some of the pictures you've made. Well, a few of them will be... The developed. iris is completely closed. Oh. oh. Well, it must have just happened, Mr. Brandon. Here are cigars, Mr. Brandon. Oh, thanks, sir. Hey, your boss seems like a nice guy. Yeah, but don't let it get you. He's got a lot of women crazy about him. Any one in particular? Oh, I understand this Norma Craig who was murdered. She used to run around with him. Uh, did you ever see her? Yeah, a couple of nights ago. She came into the club. Boy, was Lucille Compton, so she thought she had the inside track. Then this Craig woman shows up after being gone seven years. But Lucille ain't getting no place either. She's only kidding herself. Gosh, 
I'm glad I'm not pretty. You can't get away with it, Lucky. After all I've done for you, the least you could do is show me a little consideration. For your own good, I suggest you don't interfere with my business. You're set here. Yeah? You have nothing to worry about. Well, I'll give you something to worry about. I know where you went Tuesday night. Norma Craig. I'll talk to you about that later. Well, now this is a fine start. We see that Larry and Vicky are in love and planning to get married. Except for the small matter that Larry is already married. And after his wife Norma, she had been missing for years and they were even separated before that. Now all of a sudden, she shows up on Vicky's doorstep and she says, I'm not going to let you two get married, and I'm not going to divorce him, but I don't want him back either. <laughs> eh, a very mean, spiteful woman. <laughs> what a broad. Now, I do like, and just to point out, what was a classic scene for film noir. You remember the scene when Vicky comes home, just gets inside her door and answers the ringing phone. And as she's talking on the phone, she's just a coal black silhouette that's backlit by the light from the hallway. That scene is a classic trope lighting effect that was often done in film noir. Uh, uh, a great scene indeed to show how lighting is used in noir movies. Now, Lucky, back at the club, as he's being interviewed by the police, he doesn't vouch for Larry. Larry says, oh, you remember seeing me at the club? And Lucky says, no, I don't. It, but he did. It's not clear why he won't vouch for Larry. So what's up with Lucky? I had, oh, I love Lucky. He's got that pencil thin Clark Gable mustache. Oh yeah, this boy's styling. I'll tell you, he's looking good, but it's not quite clear what he's up to yet. So let's get on with The Lady Confesses. Is there anything I can do, Miss Compton? No. Leave me alone. I couldn't help overhearing your conversation with Mr. Brandon. Oh, forget it, kid. I've heard a lot about Norma Craig. Did you know her very well? Yes. Too well. Believe me, that woman had it coming. From what I understand, she had a way of stirring up trouble. Yeah. See where it got her? Say, did you ever hear of her husband, Larry Craig? Sure. Everybody's interested in the Craig murder. What about Mr. Craig? Well, he and Mrs. Craig were... Yes? You're on, Miss Compton. Talk to you some other time, kid. Surprised seeing you here, Miss McGuire. Just a hunch, Captain, but I think you'll find the answer of who killed Norma Craig right here in this club. Lucille loves Brandon, and she accused him of being in Norma's house the night of the murder. And if we hadn't been interrupted, I know Lucille would have told me plenty. Well, what were they arguing about? Well, I got in on the tail end of it, but she accused Brandon of being at Norma's the night of the murder. Well, that's interesting. Did he deny it? No, he just cut her short and told her he'd talk to her later. Did you tell Captain Brown that? Mm-hmm. He seemed very interested in something the boy in the developing room told me. 
Mama came to see Brown at the club a couple of days ago. Say, do you know Lucille very well? Uh, no, not well. Why do you ask? She asked me if I knew you. She was about to say something concerning you when she was called out. Vicky, I wish you'd forget this business of playing detective. Now, you've given the police a couple of leads. Why don't you let them handle it? Look, Larry, I've started something and I've got to see it through. I worry about you, Vicky. <laughs> you shouldn't. Captain Brown sticks pretty close. Your mother raised a very stubborn little girl, Vicky. But I think I'll marry you just the same. <laughs> you know, Larry, Lucky Brandon isn't at all what I expected him to be. He isn't? No, in the first place, he's much younger. It sort of frightens me. But there's still something fascinating about the man. Maybe it's his voice or his eyes. Hey, wait a minute. You're not falling for him, are you? <laughs> you know I don't fall that easily. I know that. Uh-oh. Hello, Larry. Well, surprised you recognize me. What are you so worried about? Didn't kill Norma, did you? You know I didn't. Too bad Norma showed up. Understand you were all set to get married. No. Who told you that? Carrier pigeon. Tell me, uh, who is the lucky girl you're so crazy about? Why don't you ask the pigeon? Give Stevie a little kiss. Oh, now listen, what are you doing in here? Get back the boy, you lose your job. You talk like we're married already, honey. Come on, give baby a kiss. Oh, please, Steve. I don't understand you women. One minute you act like you're crazy about a guy, and the next minute you act like you're just crazy. Give Stevie a little, little kiss. What's going on here? Well, we were just talking. You mind if I enter into the conversation? Get back to work. Yes, sir. How did this happen? Well, I don't know. I think Steve had the wrong idea of me. I'll have him fired in the morning. Oh, please don't. I'm sure he won't try anything like that again. Oh, just a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Brandon? How did you get in here? Oh, your door was open. I was looking for some plates for my camera. There you are, miss. Thank you, Mr. Brandon. Sorry you were in such a hurry this afternoon. We might have had lunch together. You were with Larry Craig, weren't you? Why, yes, I was. I'd be more careful in choosing my friends if I were you. Will that be all, Mr. Brandon? Yes, for the time being.
park among the trees. Wait for me. Put that gun down, Lucille. You don't know what you're doing. Oh, yes, I do. You're not going to toss me over and get away with it. It's all right. The gun went off accidentally. I didn't know it was loaded. Close that door, will you, miss? Is there anything I can do, Mr. Brandon? I wonder if you mind taking Miss Compton home. Now pull yourself together, Lucy. You're going to be all right. Are you sure you feel all right? I think so. I'll go change my clothes and be back in a minute. Thank you. 
Hello. Oh, hello, Vicky. What happened before you hung up on me? Things are happening fast. Lucille tried to shoot Brandon, and I'm going to take her home. This is my chance to get her to talk, so keep your fingers crossed. She might even tell me something about you. All right, I'll speak to you later. Goodbye, Larry. Goodbye, dear. Oh, are you ready? I don't think it's necessary for you to see me home. Oh, I wouldn't think of letting you go alone. Just a minute, please. down that alley. Well, no, Miss Compton. Are you afraid you're being followed? No. I I'm just a little nervous. Thanks for seeing me home. If you'd like, I'd be glad to spend the night. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I'll be all right now. I really don't think you should be alone. No, thanks. Just the same. I feel pretty safe now that I'm in my apartment. Good night. Thanks again. Good night. What did you tell her? What are you doing here? What did you tell her? Well, what did I tell who? Vicky. Well, I, I didn't tell her anything. Oh. Don't look at me like that. Thought she could run away. No. I did everything you asked. I alibi for you. Oh, Larry. Oh, Larry, you can't. I, I'll keep my mouth shut. I, I'll keep your secret. I want her dead, too. You can't talk too much. Oh, Mr. Blair. Oh, Captain Brown. Oh, I found that in Brandon's desk. He paid Norma Craig $10,000 for something. Well, this may be very valuable. It's dated on the night of a murder. See, maybe that's where Brandon went when Larry saw him. I was surprised when I saw you come home with Miss Compton. I didn't know you were friends. Well, Brandon asked me to. They had some sort of a squabble and she tried to shoot him. I thought maybe I could get her to talk, but she wouldn't let me stay. Well, come on, Miss McGuire. I have a few questions to ask her myself. gone out without our seeing her. Hey, what's going on here? You'll wake up all my tenants. Are you the manager of this apartment house? You bet I am. Get out of here or I'll call an officer. I am an officer. We'd like to get in that apartment. Have you got a search warrant? Please let us in the apartment. Miss Compton may need us. Oh, well, all right.
But it can't be. She was alive just a few minutes ago. Strangled by a wire, just like Norma Craig. If I hadn't left her, maybe this wouldn't have happened. You know, I always thought Miss Compton was implicated in this somehow. Well, she evidently thought someone wanted to kill her. You say she tried to take a shot at Brandon? Yes, but he took the gun away from her. I wonder if he could have followed her home. I just saw a man cut down the fire escape. I tried to follow him, but he gave me the slip. Phone headquarters. Get the boys over here right away. We've had another murder. Okay. I'll take you home as soon as they get here. Good night, Miss McGuire. Good night, Captain. I was worried about you. Something terrible's happened. Lucille Compton's been murdered. I just left her apartment. Lucille murdered? Who killed her? If we knew that, we'd know who killed Norma. She was strangled the same way. It's like a nightmare, isn't it? Come on, let's take a little drive. You won't be able to sleep after this. I know I won't. No, he must have been waiting on the fire escape for me to leave. How do you know it was a man? One of the policemen saw him, but he got away. Lucille tell you? Why, nothing. She didn't have a chance to. You're keeping something from me. What did Lucille tell you? Why should I keep anything from you? I'm sure I don't know. Larry, you're acting awfully strange. Am I? I... I, I guess I'm just a little upset, that's all. <laughs> I understand. Let's forget it. Hey, you. Is that your car over there? Yes. Let's see your driver's license. What are you doing around here? Taking a walk, getting some air. Well, you'd better move along. There's been a lot of robberies around here. All right, thanks. the ride, Larry. Good night. Aren't you going to ask me up? Well, it's rather late, Larry. Just for a little while. <laughs> I'm afraid not. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Send a cab to 4468 Hillhurst. As soon as possible, please.
club, please. Captain Brown. Well, do you know where I can get in touch with him? Well, never mind. I'll try later. Yeah? She left here a couple of hours ago. She did. Well, I'll see if I can find her. Oh, Becky. Hey, Becky. I've got a call for you. Thanks. Yes? Hello, Becky. Uh, I called your house, and when I didn't get an answer, I... I'm glad you found me, Larry. I must see you. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm at home. Why don't you come over? I'll be right there, Larry. Place? Yeah. I think we'd better take a little run down to headquarters. Finally got around to me, huh? Some more routine? No, not this time. I wouldn't take this too lightly if I were you, Lucky. We found some of your fingerprints in Lucille's apartment. Also, some of Larry Craig's. We're gonna pick up Craig on our way in. Yeah, I can understand that. Lucille was sick last week, and I dropped by to see if there's anything I could do for her. Now, you can explain that down at headquarters. Come on. back to Lucille's apartment. I had an idea she had something to do with Norma's murder. I found this on her dressing table. It's addressed to Captain Brown. I know. I tried to get in touch with him. Give me that. Larry, what's come over you? Read it. Dear Captain Brown, I'm afraid for my life, so I'm leaving the city. If anything happens to me, I want you to know who's responsible. I foolishly alibied for the murderer of Norma Craig. The murderer is... Oh, Larry, no, not you. You knew that? Lucille told you. I strangled Norma because I wanted to marry you. I killed Lucille because she talked too much. 
I tried to get you to keep out of this, but you wouldn't listen to me. Mary, you're mad. Perfect alibi. Too perfect. I guess that clears you, Lucky. But tell me, just out of curiosity, why did you refuse to admit you saw Craig in the club that night? Well, I had to have an alibi myself. I got a frantic phone call from Norma. By the time I got there, she was dead. I'd been up there a little early to pay her back that $10,000 I borrowed. Besides that, I went back to pick up my fountain pen that I'd left there. I see. For a while, it looked pretty bad. Yeah, I know. I wonder if it'd be expecting too much if I asked you to take Miss McGuire home. No. She promises not to spy on me. I'll do my best. We certainly have a fine finish for our film. Turns out that Larry was the killer all along. And he loved his wire. That, that wire strangulation thing, that's called a garrote. And he's killing everyone with it. He killed Norma. He killed Lucille. He even tried to kill Vicky when it was obvious she didn't really even know anything to kill her for. So, he didn't love her that much. And Lucky? That's who I suspected at first. Lucky was innocent the whole time. The only reason he had lied about not seeing Larry at the club was really just to alibi himself. Uh, because he had been at Norma's later that night, but he knew that would look bad. So the only way to alibi himself was to lie and, and say he hadn't seen Larry. But, uh, yeah, he's my boy Lucky, sporting that uh, Clark Gable mustache. Come on, ladies, say it. He was styling and looking good, wasn't he? Huh? Oh yeah, he was certainly pulling it off. But uh, yes, uh, this was uh, this was a fine film with a plot twisting finish and some great cinematography. Well, I thank you for spending the evening with us at Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long-lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time.